Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Sunday afternoon. It's February 10th and it's 1.28 p.m. And I have a message to bring to you. Um, actually, a couple. Um, well, different types. Um, okay, let me start at the beginning. Oh, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I got your message. And I ask you to please help me to present it to anyone who finds this video. Please help me to make sense, to not have word finding difficulties, and to present it in the way that you want them to hear it. Speak through me, Lord. Use your Holy Spirit to speak through me. In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, you know what I've put up recently, and I put up the one about how we should be keeping our eyes on Jesus and not worrying about what might or might not be coming down the road with military tribunals or martial law and stuff like that. Well, somebody left a comment on my second to the last video it was at the very bottom and it was really long and this person was saying all kinds of stuff I was going to make a video reading off that comment but I decided I'm going to research all this stuff that I think it was a woman sorry I can't remember your name right off because I'm not going to include it <laughs> But I wanted to have something to back up all the things you said about President Trump. Because I know a lot of you still believe that God put President Trump in there and maybe he did. Well, surely he did because he. we know that he appoints all the leaders. They may not be good, but he puts them in there for a reason. He has his reasons. There has not been a good politician in our leadership, probably ever. I mean, there are some that seem better than others, okay? It's all part of the play, you see? Mr. Trump is part of the Illuminati. Now, having said that, I started researching these things she was telling me. I've even got a little spreadsheet here, or whatever you call this. I have a, an article about Laura Silby, who was supposedly Hillary Clinton's lover. I couldn't find that proof, but I did find how she tried to abduct first 33 and then 40 children from Haiti. And Bill Clinton went down there to her rescue, or she probably would still be in prison. Good job, Haiti. Okay, so this was called um, Clinton Silsby Trafficking Scandal and how the media attempted to ignore or cover it up. Okay, so I had spent a good little bit of time on this. Then I also researched what she said about him, or maybe it wasn't Mr. Clinton that did it, but he owns this huge, monstrous mansion plus estate in Palm Beach. Find out that Palm Beach is exempt from getting 5G, supposedly because it looks dumb. You know, takes away from the aesthetic beauty of Palm Beach. Okay, it just happens to be where Mr. Trump has his getaway place. Oh, is it awesome. It's like some kind of place you would just go to for a vacation, you know, and pay $500 a night at least. Golf course. 
Anyway, it's wonderful. Well, anyway, I spent time on that. While I was doing my research, I got a number. My screen blank blackened. I got a number, 1058. Now let me pull that forward. It wasn't the Greek 1058. This time it was the Hebrew. I'm sure of it. And this word is, um, I'll let this thing tell you. Well, oh my gosh, my computer is hacked. Every time I get off of it, the internet switches to someone's bedroom. And I have to switch it back to Greenbrier Wi-Fi or it doesn't work. Now it should work. Strong's H1058. Baha. 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 Strong's H1058. I started reading what it meant. To weep. It's used in the following manner. Weep 98 times. Bewail five times. Soar. And then the rest doesn't make sense. Two times. Inferred for emphasis. Mourned. Anyway. Moving on. On down to the definition of it. Baka. A primitive root. To weep. Generally. To bemoan. At all. Bewail. Complain. Make lamentation. More. Mourn. Soar with tears and weep. And I felt the Lord was weeping. And it made me sad. And I, so then I said, I don't think I should be doing this. I'm spending entirely too much time looking up all this stuff to try to prove that Mr. Trump really isn't who a lot of you think he is. He's not our knight in shining armor. He's not going to save America. Jesus is. And then I looked at my email and I got this. This was sent through my email from Dawn, which I still get because some of them are new people. And I believe with all my heart, this one is from the Lord and it's kind of long. So... Bear with me. It was received part of it on February 1st through February 3rd. Okay, I'm not sure how that happens, but anyway. At different times, the Lord gave this person parts and parts and more parts, and then it's all this. Here's the message. My children, quiet yourselves before me so that you may listen to me this day. I long to speak to your innermost being. Allow me to remove the scales from your eyes so that you can see and unstop your ears so that you can hear what I am saying. I have given my true watchmen and prophets thousands upon thousands of messages about the terrible things that are coming upon this generation. But who has listened and repented? How many more warning messages 
must I give? How many more messages must you read or listen to before you will repent, begin to do as I say, and surrender all to me and obey my commands? How many of you will continue to seek out mysteries, wisdom, knowledge, numerical sequences, dates, and possible apocalyptic scenarios more than me? How many of you will continue to read warnings looking for clues of timing of events without reading my word. How many more times must I plead with you to spend time with me so that you can know me and hear my voice? Who has drawn near to me so that I can draw near to them? Who has forsaken all to follow me? Who has been transformed by the renewing of their mind daily? Who has died to themselves daily so that I can live through you? Who of you is ready for the fiery trials that are soon coming? Who of you is ready to lay down this life on account of me? Ask yourself this question, beloved. Has my searching out of the various prophecies and current events in the world replaced my time alone with Jesus? I tell you the truth. If some of you would spend as much time focusing on me as you do searching out apocalyptic news and prophetic words that others are hearing, you would know much more about what is coming and when it is coming than you do now. I tell secrets to those who are close to me and all my sheep hear my voice. You must seek me first with all that is within you before I tell you of things to come. It doesn't work the other way around. When you seek answers to even biblical questions without seeking me first, above all else, Deceiving spirits will answer you, or you will hear your own vain imaginations, and you will be in error. I tell you the truth. You will be held accountable for everything that I have spoken and what you have read. This includes all of the warnings you have read and heard from my prophets of today and all of my written word, whether you have read it or not. Ignorance is not an excuse because it is a choice. If you choose to remain ignorant when the truth has been offered over and over, you will end up being deceived and given over to the enemy and your own delusions. There will not be any excuse on Judgment Day. There will be no one standing beside you to defend you unless it is I. I will not defend you unless I know you intimately. If I do not know you, I will tell you to depart from me because you are a worker of iniquity and you will be cast into the lake of fire with your father the devil 
who you love. Obviously, this is not meant for all of us, but some maybe, and a lot of folks you know. All right, let me continue. <laughs> it is not enough to know about me. You must know me intimately in the spirit. I have told you this over and over. I died for your redemption from sin by my shed blood and so that I could live inside of you and fellowship with you so that we could be one even as my father and I are one. Do not reject me this day. You know not whether you even have your next breath. And you do not know when your number of days are over. But I do. I hold it all in my hand. And I want you to reach out to that hand and trust me with everything that you are. Desire me more than anything else. And you will gain many. Many other things that you desire now. I tell you, do not delay for the end time events have accelerated quickly. Just as I have said, and they will continue to speed up until time is no more. It is then that the he it is then that he who is wicked will remain wicked and he who is holy will remain holy. I love you, but you must listen to me now. The kickoff event is still coming and you must be ready. Many even worse things shall follow. Do not reject me. It may be the last time that you hear my warning and pleading. Humble yourselves before me now. Repent and desire me above all else. I love you so much. And the person who received is put in parentheses. I felt such strong love as he said that, but also sadness because so few are putting what they hear and read into practice. Close parentheses. It's signed, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, by Jeff Byerly. I do not know this Jeff Byerly, but the words, considering how I was just spending all that time looking for this stuff and then getting the number and feeling that it meant the Lord was sad. The Lord was weeping that we were spending time on these other things and believing in a man who is not who you think. Let's believe in Jesus. Now, this clearly is not talking to the bride. We are watching for him. Yes, I could do better to spend more time in the word. I don't usually spend a lot of time researching these things. And I've been called out for it. You should do your research, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, if I feel led to, I will. Otherwise, I'm just putting up what the Father leads me to, and that's it. And I'm not spending a lot of time researching. I'm just going to delete this. And when I got this number, this 1058, and I was like, you know, another awe moment. And I looked it up in the... Greek and it was it was a proper name of some guy only used three times in the New Testament all in the same chapter can you remember now who he was so I thought well that that's not 
doesn't say anything to me. And I looked it up in Hebrew and I knew this was it. Too weak. Let's not cause the Lord to weep. And we can have joy knowing we're pleasing him for doing what he wanted, what he wants. The thing of it is we need to share this with people who aren't. People who are so caught up in the political arena. Excuse me. And they're caught up in, well, things going on. I mean, there's so much going on. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to watch some videos about it or do a little research, but don't do it instead of reading your word and praying. Always keep him first. Do that above all. And then if you have time, if you don't work or you have an extra hour while you're waiting for your children to get through playing soccer, you can, re you know, watch a video and research it or something. I'm just saying the Lord's telling us, it sounds to me like this message is coming from the Lord. That he doesn't want people doing the other instead of of praying and reading their word. I'm sure those of you who it pertains to will know who it pertains to. And those of you who it doesn't pertain to will know somebody that it does. Okay? I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you and all your devices so we can stay connected until we're out of here. All right. With that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.